the problem about coming to the end uh, of a conference uh, and speaking at the end uh, of a day's work that you've all been doing uh, is that you now know far more about this topic uh, than I do. Um, and uh, I, I know in, in the discussion I've just had with Brendan uh, on the way in, I know that this has been a really, uh, a really good and interesting day. And indeed, the uh, last uh, session, which I had the opportunity of uh, getting the uh, very end of, was, was clearly um, very, uh, very interesting. Uh, I want to thank the uh, IIEA for uh, inviting me to be with you at the closing uh, of the conference and I want to extend my congratulations to Brendan and to all his colleagues uh, for hosting this very successful day uh, which has brought together uh, a broad range of stakeholders for a discussion uh, on this key global issue um, which of course has its own challenges and indeed uh, opportunities. I think it's very fitting that this conference is taking place uh, in Ireland, particularly here in Dublin. Uh, which we now regard as the internet capital of Europe. Uh, and I believe that we are well placed to contribute uh, to the worldwide effort uh, to confront uh, the challenges that we have and to take uh, maximum benefit from the opportunities that are presented. And in my remarks uh, this evening, I want to focus on some of the key issues and to offer uh, my own perspective uh, on how we can keep cyberspace open and secure for all. Um, this conference is taking place at the uh, end of a week uh, where we have seen here um, the data breach at, uh, loyalty build, at the Loyalty Build company uh, in which credit card details of 80,000 Irish customers were compromised uh, and many were put at risk. The initial indications are that these breaches were an external criminal act. It is, I think, a timely reminder of the potential costs of cybercrime to individuals, to businesses and government bodies in terms of financial and reputational damage. We recognise this and swift action has already been taken by the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner and by the Garda Síochána to investigate the matter. A number of countries, of course, have had to uh, already respond to similar threats. Earlier this year, the people of the Republic of Korea experienced a coordinated cyber attack. At midday on the 20th of March, the hard drives of 30,000 PCs were wiped clean. It marked the beginning of a coordinated attack on six of the country's banks in a suspected state-sponsored cyber attack. Financial services were disrupted and taken offline as access was denied to the country's ATMs. The President's website and national broadcasting companies were also targeted. The government of the Republic of Korea has responded robustly to this attack, which caused over 500 million euros worth of damage to the economy. By 2017, uh, Korea will have trained 5,000 additional cybersecurity experts and doubled its cybersecurity budget to 7 billion euro. The lesson from both of these attacks is clear. Individuals, businesses and government must be constantly vigilant and ensure that our systems evolve to meet the ever-growing threat. We are gathered here today because of cyber incidents such as this and their potential impact on us as citizens, businesses and governments. For a highly globalised country such as Ireland, responding to the global implications of cyber security is essential to protect the human rights of its citizens and the pursuit of our economic interests. Managing the risks arising from malicious use of cyberspace will allow us to continue to benefit from the vast opportunities in the digital economy, which currently accounts for almost 100,000 jobs here in Ireland. It is also of critical importance in the broader economy where the internet is a key enabler for job creation, modernization and for generating economic growth. I know that there has already been a great deal of discussion here today on the costs to business of global cybercrime, estimated at 2.7% of the annual turnover for Irish organisations and also regarding the responses which are required in both the public and private sectors to address these threats. There is a compelling case for the public and private sectors to work together with a view to responding to these challenges. Such cooperation in addressing cyber challenges is vital and also needs the involvement of civil society. 
Initiatives such as the development and implementation of the Joint Government Industry ICT Action Plan have demonstrated that joint cooperation can allow us to achieve our common priorities. Cooperation between my department, the state agencies and the private sector has enabled us to promote the expertise that Ireland can provide in areas such as information security, cybercrime, forensics and cloud computing. I would note here the excellent work being done by the UCD Centre for Cybersecurity and Cybercrime Investigation, leading by example as the innovators stay one step ahead of the cyber criminals. However, we do need to build on this cooperation if we are to be successful in continuing to grow the digital economy and to expand our thriving ICT sector. We must work to make cyberspace a secure place for our citizens to communicate and to do business with each other without fear of attack or surveillance. As I have previously said, I believe strongly that states should not bug other friendly states and I reject out of hand the notion that extra surveillance should take place just because the technology permits it. Such activity puts at risk our efforts to keep cyberspace open and free. Internationally, Ireland is deeply involved in work with partners on the issues that you have discussed today, such as capacity building, technical standards, norms and confidence building measures. In these discussions, we bring to the table our experience of economic transformation at the vanguard of the ICT industry and our commitment to the values of openness and transparency. We see an open and secure internet as an international public good and we reject efforts to transform the debate on security into one of control and repression. The protection of human rights must apply online as well as offline, notably in relation to freedom of expression and access to the internet. Problems in cyberspace must be peacefully resolved and without recourse to hasty responses. Last year, as Chair in Office of the OSCE, Ireland took the lead in promoting internet freedom addressing cybercrime and developing mechanisms to reduce uh, the risk of conflict in cyberspace. We initiated a process to develop mechanisms, confidence building measures, aimed at coordinating the joint response of the 57 OSCE participating states to cyber incidents. The primary objective of this process is to ensure that cyber incidents do not degenerate into conflict. During the Dublin Conference on Internet Freedom, which I hosted last year, we examined broader internet governance issues in OSCE participating states. Civil society actors, representatives of the ICT sector and the media discussed how to ensure that the internet remains an open, global and public forum for exercising freedom of opinion and expression and for facilitating the enjoyment of other human rights and fundamental freedoms. Through a successful joint collaboration with Google, we continued these discussions here at the Mansion House where we had a conference and the conference participants had the opportunity to connect with the representatives of the ICT sector. During the OSCE's annual police experts meeting, we focused on the issue of fighting the threat of cybercrime and shared Ireland's expertise in this area with representatives of police forces from the OSCE participating states. Our EU presidency earlier this year made good progress on a number of initiatives aimed at supporting and stimulating growth in the digital economy in areas such as data protection and reaching agreement among member states on a framework for the implementation of the EU strategy on cybersecurity. Let me conclude by assuring you all, representatives of civil society, business, the EU and other organisations represented here today, that Ireland will remain actively engaged on cyber security at the EU and international levels with the objective of strengthening resilience and improving international responses to cyber threats. It is an area where we need more Europe and more international cooperation as the issues that we face are too great for one country or one company to tackle alone. Only a global coalition of citizens, businesses and government can ensure that cyberspace remains a positive tool at our disposal. At the national level, I will be working with my own Cabinet colleagues to intensify cooperation across government departments and within wider society. While much has already been achieved, keeping cyberspace open, keeping it secure and free will require constant vigilance and I look forward to working with you all in achieving this objective. Thank you very much indeed.